AOK Source Materials, headquartered in Post Falls, Idaho, manages the raw material production for all allergen products manufactured in the United States. Allergen Source Materials are the first stage in the production of allergen immunotherapy products used in the diagnosis and treatment of allergic patients. These extracts are the basis for the allergy shots you may be considering with your doctor. From the allergen source material, we extract the complex proteins that cause your symptoms. As your doctor uses these products, you're exposed to these proteins in a controlled manner that may alter the way your immune system reacts and may significantly reduce your allergy symptoms over time. Over the next few minutes, we will explore the care and attention to detail that goes into producing ALK's high-quality allergen extracts. ALK Source Materials, or ASM, currently operates facilities across the country. These facilities account for over 100,000 square feet of manufacturing space and 800 acres of exclusive farmland, giving ALK a tremendous amount of control over its raw materials. Technicians are able to monitor, characterize, and analyze every aspect of the materials from the quality of the soil to the consistency of the species. These raw materials are used to create extracts for the U.S. as well as globally, requiring ASM to not only meet FDA standards, but also European regulations, which often include additional testing and quality control requirements. We've changed source materials manufacturing. If you look at some of the source material manufacturing decades ago, it was mom and pop shops, it was garage kinds of processes. We've come a long way since then and we continue to strive to be the source material excellence center in the world. We've become, I think, a much more evolved uh, organization with good pharmaceutical class, world-class systems. We've put in a you know, 90 to 100,000 square foot facilities and we manage thousands of acres of land and we control the processes much more tightly. These are natural products. There's inherent biological variation within these products. The more parameters that we can control, the less variation there is. Starting with just a seed and a field, the majority of the materials needed to create allergen extracts are planted, cultivated, and collected as any other agricultural crop. This requires long-term planning on the part of the manufacturer. Well, we considering what new species to add in the small plots, uh, you know, what size plot, how we're going to grow them. Are we going to grow them in rows or solid seeded? Are we going to irrigate them? Or what fertilizer program are we going to use? How are we going to control pests on the farm? Once these plans are set in motion, experts take great care in nurturing the plants to ensure that they grow a healthy, sustainable crop. Of course, working with ALK agricultural products does not come without challenges. The ALK source material farms are subject to all the same concerns as any other farm would be faced with, including extreme weather conditions, pests, pathogens, and parasites. Wind, rain, and heat present unique challenges as the collectors try to gather as much material as they can as quickly as they can. We're faced by challenges in getting a pure product in nature where there are a lot of things floating around in the air besides pollen. Many of these organisms live wild outside, or we cultivate them outside, and so they are uh, subject to the forces of nature. Natural occurrences that we can't control can have enormous impact on our ability to collect a target species. We can have 300 acres of beautiful crop for pollen crop, timothy pollen or ragweed, for example, and have weather come in at exactly the same time we need to harvest and have a, a bust and, have, and be unable to collect one kilo of pollen. Despite these concerns, the scientists, agronomists, horticulturalists, and technicians at ALK have many years of experience developing contingency plans. I think in general our, our industry is a pretty green industry. Um, we do a lot of farming. We limit and control very tightly the type of chemicals, the type of pesticides. We have a lot of documentation. We do a lot of testing to ensure that we are not compromising the quality of the raw material. We also carefully plan and rotate fields to avoid cross-contamination. It's important that the fields are clean. Uh, it's important that there's some segregation between species. And it's important that we get a healthy crop every year. So we do all we can to ensure uh, uh, good farming practices are, are maintained. 
And we do that by growing a very concentrated crop, collecting at just the right time. Typically, the other crops around it pollinate at another time. After collection, every lot is microscopically examined for foreign pollen. Weather, pest, and careful field planning aren't the only challenges our experts face. Each species that is harvested has to be evaluated for the most effective way to collect the pollen. There's careful consideration given to the way the plant pollinates so the team can get the optimal amount of material without damage. Sometimes we cut or clip or pick uh, catkins, branches, uh, flowering structures on the, on the plant. Uh, other times we'll vacuum. For instance, a grass field, we have uh, equipment that enables us to vacuum that. Other times we'll water set. A water setting pollen is the species is cut in the field, usually by hand. It's brought into a greenhouse and it is literally set into water, water setting. After a couple of days, the pollen uh, falls off onto paper and it is, uh, it is captured there with, with vacuums. We have various techniques and we sort of, uh, each species kind of lends itself to uh, a different technique. Many of the pollens that need collection each year are found on the land that the team controls. However, in many cases, collectors have gone as far as knocking door to door in residential neighborhoods, asking homeowners if they can pick catkins off the trees in their front yard. It's pretty much wherever we can find the species, is that's where we're going to go. And mind you, there's about 60 to 80 sites, so these are homeowners' front lawns for the most part. But a lot of times you'll be at a, at a homeowner's site in the morning, and then by the night, it, by the nighttime, it's gone. There's just an expected loss that kind of gets put into the equation. That's why we have so many sites, because we just expect to lose half of them. This delicate process that takes so much planning isn't as easy as it may seem. Pollen collection is oftentimes unpredictable, causing teams to be on call around the clock during peak pollination seasons. Pollination occurs at various times. We're not exactly sure what triggers it. Either getting enough humidity, or it's just gotten warm enough. Something has happened to make the catkin, which is what we collect off trees. Something has happened to make it expand, and then at some point, either a gust of wind or the temperature gets hot, the pollen just, it, we call it popping, but the pollen literally pops out of these structures. And, and at that point, we can't collect anymore. It's, over, it's totally done. Once the raw pollen is collected, it is put through a sifter of multiple sized pores to remove impurities. This can either be a manual process for small batch pollens or automatic in the case of a large volume product like Timothy grass pollen. The dry material passes through a series of gradually decreasing filter sizes, first removing large debris, then filtering out more and more impurities until pollen the smallest component is left at the bottom. This material is now ready for processing. What people are allergic to is the protein inside of the pollen, and the next step down in the process is to get that protein out. Our job is to make that easy for them. Essentially, the pollen grain has an exoshell, an outer, harder surface, and outside of that and inside of that as well, there is lipids, basically just fats. So these are energy sources for the pollen, and our objective is to remove those fats from the pollen grain. The lipids that surround the pollen grains need to be removed. So the process is that we use solvents to dissolve the lipids. So um, we use a specific solvent that would facilitate removing the lipids from the grains. So certain species will require more processing to remove the lipids versus others. For example, the grasses have very little lipid layers in them, so they can be defatted very easily versus weeds. Uh, which have a lot of fat in them, is very difficult and takes more time to re remove. This defatting process takes between two and three weeks, and when completed, produces a free-flowing powder that is ready to move to the next stage of manufacturing. Additional measures are taken to help ensure the highest level of quality during raw material processing. To ensure the stability of the pollen grain, uh, we don't want it to change, we want it as it is. We store our raw materials in freezers and then when we store it as a finished good, we'll also again freeze it so that it's in its most stable state. We want to keep the protein in that stable condition until it can be extracted. Plant material is not the only thing experts are concerned about collecting. Other allergens like epithelium, venom, and insects have their own collection processes, many of which have been pioneered by ALK. For example, mites. We have the largest mite operation in the world, I suspect. I, I, uh... I can't imagine anyone having one bigger. It's estimated that a little over a quarter of the population in the United States is allergic to house dust mites. 
and so that's no insignificant number. Well, room temperature or slightly warmer temperatures are what house dust mites like to live in. They're especially love your beds. They're very hard to avoid. Mite cultivation is a delicate process engineered and perfected by ALK experts. This process consists of a few steps, growing the mites, preparation for processing, and then processing itself. The killed mite culture contains the house dust mite bodies, their fecal pellets, and the media itself. And then we go through a proprietary fractionation process where we separate the mite bodies out from the mite fecal product and then also the, uh, the waste medium. So far, we've explored the care and devotion ALK's teams give to the growing, collecting, and processing of various allergenic species. However, ALK's success in creating the source materials lies in another arena the extensive testing, documentation, and quality control measures we use. Regardless of meeting the compliance goals, that's the way the bar is set. We are interested in understanding more about these materials, and so we may measure many more aspects and control many more aspects of source material production in order to be able to produce these very consistent, very high quality materials from batch to batch, from year to year. At this point, we probably have 40% of the uh, employee base here is focused on either quality or developing improved processes. All pollen batches undergo a number of tests and quality checks before being released for manufacturing. Most importantly, species identity determinations are made by ASM experts using taxonomic keys and herbarium specimens. Additionally, the pollen is examined under the microscope to further certify the collected batch for identity, purity, and integrity. When we receive material, it goes through a process at incoming. Um, at that point, the material is evaluated against uh, established specifications um, with key quality attributes. If those quality attributes are met and we can positively identify or confirm the identity of that material, then the material goes forward for processing. We perform high resolution scanning of our plant materials, including any plant parts that would confirm identity. And when in question, we work with established botanists at various uh, academia institutions to confirm the identification and partner with them in helping us reach a conclusion. Since ALK Source Materials is a global supplier and the European regulatory landscape is becoming more stringent for allergy source materials, ALK has pushed its quality control measures even beyond what is typically required in North America. This includes additional quality systems and testing not required by the FDA, such as detecting residual solvents and more stringent traceability and documentation procedures. We have improved our ability to profile some of the source materials, and that is to lend a better um, mechanism for determining the purity. ALK scientists look for a wide variety of markers, including foreign material and moisture content. If the material doesn't meet specifications, it is evaluated to determine if the material can be reprocessed to see if further purification can be done. If no further purification can be done, then the material is discarded. We have a microbiology lab dedicated to the microbiological testing of our products. We evaluate our product to look for the level of bioburden load and are currently evaluating how nature contributes to that bioburden load. What are the natural flora associated with the product, etc. Scientists also test material degradation to help determine the long-term effects of the quality and stability of our finished extracts by subjecting the material to elevated temperatures and measuring any changes. That data is then tracked and trended mm -hmm. over the course of the stability protocol, um, in some cases many years, to identify the shelf life for not only the source material, but extrapolate it out for the drug product. Along with a wide range of tests, quality control teams are also responsible for an extensive list of auditing and documentation procedures to ensure consistency in the product. Our record storage process allows us to maintain those documents for long periods of time, up to 25 years, which is the European standard. Some of these measures include documentation management, field certification, release and review, 
batch records, a compliance program for internal and external audits, and a specification management program to ensure that all materials that come into the building are handled appropriately. ALK strives to continuously improve and set the standard for allergen extract materials processing on a global scale. We are constantly looking at our processes and, and trying to find ways of making them better. Our products are at an unprecedented level, particularly for the allergy industry. I've spent 25 years in this business and I've never worked for a company that has as great a commitment as this company does to their patients and to their employees. We have the best of the best. We take the best methods that will give us confidence in the highest quality product. We've upgraded our overall um, institutional knowledge, we've tightened our control. We've continued to improve our documentation. I think we're making better products because of it. We're working with hundreds of species, all types of organisms, plants, animals, fungi. It's as exciting and as dynamic and as challenging today as it was 35 years ago.